Melanie Cecere and welcome to the special edition of Earth from Space on the European Space Agency Web TV. Since the launch of Sentinel-1A back in 2014, the Sentinel-1 mission of the Copernicus program marks the first complete set of the Sentinel constellations in space. To celebrate three years of its successful operations, we put together a video commemorating the many worldwide events that it helped to cover. Let's take a look. The first in the Copernicus program series, the Sentinel-1 satellites carry an advanced radar instrument to provide an all-weather, day and night supply of imagery of Earth's surface. Launched on April 3, 2014, followed by Sentinel-1B on April 25, 2016, makes it the first complete set of the Copernicus constellations in space. The C-band synthetic aperture radar builds on ESAs and Canada's Heritage SAR systems on ERS-1, ERS-2, Anvisat and Radarsat. As a constellation of two satellites orbiting 180 degrees apart, the mission images the entire Earth with a high coverage frequency depending on the latitude. The first set of acquisitions captured just nine days after launch of Sentinel-1A included an area in Namibia that was flooded by the Zambezi River. The images were available in less than an hour once they'd been received by the ground station. Sentinel-1's ability to see through cloud and rain and in pitch darkness make it particularly useful for monitoring floods and for emergency response. In fact, this area of the Caprivi Plain was shrouded in thick cloud when the satellite acquired the image on April 13, 2014. In May 2014, although not yet operational, the Sentinel-1A satellite provided radar data for mapping the floods in Bosnia and Herzegovina, where heavy rainfall had led to widespread flooding and landslides, killing dozens of people and leaving hundreds of thousands displaced. This was the first contribution of Sentinel-1 to the Copernicus Emergency Management Service, managed by the European Commission. Following the commissioning phase of Sentinel-1A, the supply of free and open Sentinel-1 data started three years ago, on October 3, 2014. As well as monitoring glaciers, Sentinel-1 generates timely maps of sea ice conditions, particularly for the increasingly busy Arctic waters. Images from its advanced radar are used to help assure safe, year-round navigation in polar waters. Since 2015, following the various My Ocean programs that first started back in 2009, the Copernicus Marine Environment Monitoring Service has been providing regular and systematic reference information on the physical state, variability and dynamics of the ocean and marine ecosystems for the world's oceans and Europe's seas. This was the first Copernicus service that routinely makes use of Sentinel-1 imagery. On December 2, 2014, radar images from the Sentinel-1A satellite helped to monitor ground movements of the erupted Fogo volcano on Cape Verde's Fogo Island. The volcano erupted for the first time in 19 years, with lava flows threatening nearby villages, resulting in the evacuation of local residents. Radar scans from the Sentinel-1A satellite were used to study the volcano. The interferogram, a combination of two radar images, showed differences from before and during the eruption. On April 25, 2015, a 7.8 magnitude earthquake struck Nepal, claiming over 5,000 lives and affecting millions of people. Sentinel-1A's swath width of 250 kilometers over land surfaces allowed for an unprecedented area size to be analyzed from a single scan. The entire area was covered under the same geometry every 12 days, allowing for the wider region to be regularly monitored and fully analyzed for land deformation with the powerful interferometry technique. Sentinel-1 was able to observe that an overall area 120 kilometers long and 100 kilometers wide had moved. Half of that uplifted and the other half, north of Kathmandu, subsided. In some areas, the ground motion reached one meter or more. The Copernicus Emergency Management Service was activated on the day the earthquake struck, prompting ESA to collect satellite imagery, which was made available to support relief efforts. The Sentinel-1 and two satellites of Europe's Environmental Copernicus program are also used to study changes in farming on a weekly basis, with a 10 to 20 meter resolution and with a free and open data policy. They allow us to observe subtle changes in land use, 
for instance, which crops are being grown and how fast or well they are developing, as well as spotting differences within single larger fields. On August 24, 2016, an earthquake struck central Italy, claiming some 300 lives and causing widespread damage. Satellite images were used to help emergency aid organizations while scientists analyzed ground movement. Experts were able to quantify the ground movement in both vertical and east-west directions by combining the radar scans obtained as the Sentinel-1 satellites flew both south to north and north to south. Data from a multitude of Copernicus contributing missions were used to produce maps for damage assessment through the Copernicus Emergency Management Service. On February 16, 2017, following the appearance of a large crack in the ice shelf close to the Halley 6 research station in Antarctica, information from the Copernicus Sentinel-1 and Sentinel-2 satellites helped to decide to close the base down temporarily. Another benefit brought by the Copernicus Sentinel-1 mission occurred last May 12, 2017, when a rapid acceleration of an Arctic glacier over the past year was detected. Sitting on Norway's Spitsbergen Island in the Svalbard archipelago, the Negrebreen Glacier has recently seen a surge in ice surface speed, increasing from 1 meter to 13 meters a day over the winter. Monitoring glaciers in areas prone to bad weather and long periods of darkness, like the Arctic, was difficult before the advent of satellites. A team of scientists working under ESA's Climate Change Initiative in the Glacier's CCI project are using satellite radar and optical coverage to map glaciers at different times and determine their changes in extent, elevation and speed. Sentinel-1 provides us with a near real-time overview of a glacier flow across the Arctic and in Antarctica, remarkably increasing our capacity to capture the evolution of glacier surges. In this way, new information can be used to refine numerical models of glacier surging to help predict the temporal evolution of the contribution of polar glaciers to sea level rise. With a lifespan of minimum seven years, we expect the Sentinel-1 constellation to bring many more benefits to society with its array of applications that cover numerous services. From monitoring of polar sea ice extent, routine sea ice mapping, surveillance of the marine environment, including oil spill monitoring and ship detection for maritime security, sea state monitoring for wind and waves, to monitoring land surface for motion risks, mapping for forest, water and soil management, to supporting humanitarian aid and crisis situations, Sentinel-1 is a game changer indeed.